What's up, guys? Welcome back to King Kraken Sports. My name is Mike. Today, earlier, if you haven't seen it, um, I did the AFC East draft grades. Now we're doing the NFC East. In the NFC East, uh, really every single team did exactly what they should have in this draft. Uh, so let's get into it. let's get into it. So let's start with the New York Giants, who really um, no one knew what they were going to do coming into this. We it all depended on on the top of the board, um, but. I think they made the smart move, starting off with the number two pick, by going with Saquon Barkley. Listen, the Giants foolishly believe that Eli has at least another two to three years left, even though he's been washed for about two to three years. Uh, but you know what? If they feel like they can get something out of Eli, what they need to do is surround him with playmakers. And Saquon Barkley was by far the best player in this class, and it wasn't really even all that close. Uh, getting him at number two when he's the number one player, I mean, this is obviously an A an A plus pick. Uh, he's amazing out of the backfield as a receiver. He's a game changer at running back. I don't know if he's going to get like a 2,000 yard season. He probably won't. I would say year one, Saquon's probably looking at around 16, 1700 yards. And you know what? I think they finally solved their running back issue because Paul Perkins, Orleans Darkwa, uh, these just you know, this random rotation of really camp bodies. Uh, Paul Perkins has been one of the most disappointing uh, running backs, uh, running back prospects in a couple of years. So to finally get that home run pick, uh, the Giants and Dave Gettleman um, definitely, definitely uh, nailed that pick. And I know a lot of people are unhappy because while on the uh, rookie wage scale, uh, paying a you know, running back, yeah, I went through this in the AFC East grade. Uh, but I mean, just like we saw with Leonard Fournette last year, a limited quarterback, <clears throat> Blake Bortles, Eli Manning, they're in the same ilk now. Um, how do you, how do you, how does a rookie running back being taken that high help them? Simple. They don't have to make as many plays. Blake Bortles was able to get a team to a, a to the AFC Championship game. Was it solely based on Blake Bortles? No, it's because Leonard Fournette's a genetic freak. Saquon Barkley is even more of a genetic freak than than Leonard Fournette was. So, and he can help a lot more in the passing game than Leonard Fournette can. The Giants fucking nailed this pick. Um, as an Eagles fan, it upset me even more when at 34, they went ahead and got Will Hernandez out of UTEP, a player I really wanted in Philadelphia uh, badly at the end of night one, but the Eagles traded out more on them later. Uh, Will Hernandez is just your classic throwback mauler at, at left guard. Uh, clear and holes for Saquon Barkley. This is a scary duo. He was my 31st ranked player. They got him at 34. This is an A. Um, I would have thought personally that uh, Connor Williams would have been the pick if they were looking for a guard, but obviously with a power running back you know, and a superstar running back, you want like a road grader to clear the way for him. Will Hernandez fits perfectly in that role. Pick 66, Lorenzo Carter, a guy I thought might have been able to, to slip into the first round because uh, I, I saw a lot of Leonard Floyd in his game, and Leonard Floyd went early round one a couple years ago. I thought they were more or less uh, built from you know, you know uh, from the same cloth. Uh, they ended up getting him in round three, and this is another really scary pick for the Giants. And once again, uh, athletic linebackers, this is exactly what Dave Gettleman built in Carolina with Thomas, you know, when they had Thomas Davis, obviously he drafted uh, Luke Keekley, Shaq Thompson, bringing that over to the Giants after years of um, of their old GM, whose name escapes me right now. Um, there's a reason that guy's not there. Um, anyways, my point being, after years of the old regime not valuing the linebacker position whatsoever and getting these unathletic linebackers that are just rotational guys, seventh round picks, being able to invest early in quality linebackers that can actually not only stop the run cover, but can also rush the passer, which is a massive strength of Lorenzo Carter's, uh, another win for the Giants. He was my 39th ranked player. They got him at 66. I gave this pick another A, so the Giants, after a couple of mediocre drafts in a row, uh, really off to a fantastic start, and it doesn't stop there because three picks later, they get B.J. Hill, the defensive tackle out of North Carolina State, one of the many, many players among that, uh, you know, from that North Carolina team. And in fact, that whole front four from North Carolina, you know, ends up getting drafted. B.J. Hill, uh, kind of a draft season riser, Decent tape, but like really great athlete, really high potential. Item is my 59th overall player. They got him at 69. Nice. Um, I gave it an A minus. Uh, again, another great pick. Uh, the only reason I didn't give it a higher pick was just because they invested a pick last year in uh, in Dalvin Tomlinson. Now I know that this was a different regime, but still, 
when you've got Snacks Harrison and uh, you know Dalvin Tomlinson, I believe they've got a couple other defensive tackles. A uh, little questionable maybe why they went with another defensive tackle, but I think B.J. Hill may ultimately end up being the best uh, player amongst those interior defensive linemen for them. Um, then pick 108, their first pick on day three. Uh, they didn't have a lot of picks. Um, I think they had, what was it, uh, a one, a two, two threes, a four, and a five. Um, they came out and they fucking nailed the draft at every pick because they came out 108. Um, Davis Webb, again, picked by the old regime as the um, Manning successor. Obviously, Dave Gettleman must not like what he sees with, excuse me, uh, must not like what he sees uh, with Davis Webb. Uh, so Kyle Laletta out of Richmond, this is someone that was at one point garnering late first, early second round, you know, uh, buzz, and they got him in round four. So this is another steal for them. I uh, gave it a B. He was my 74th overall player. Um, at the time, I just, I wasn't sure because, you know, I don't know if they still have Geno Smith. I can't remember. Um, but Davis Webb was supposed to be the guy to replace Eli. And then Laletta, this was honestly heat of the moment. Um, these picks were all graded within two minutes of the pick being announced. So, not like really like right off the top of the head. So I gave it a B. Uh, if I had more time to, to think about it, I'd probably go back and maybe I'd give it like an A or an A minus uh, again. But I think Laletta is a much better player than uh, Davis Webb because uh, I had Davis Webb as a day three prospect. I had Cal Laletta as a early round three pick. Uh, goes early round four. I think. They might have something here. And, of course, they finish it off at pick 139 um, by getting R.J. McIntosh, the defensive lineman out of Miami. Um, I had him as my 124th pick. Again, um, really heavy on the interior. I think Snacks Harrison is probably towards the end of his career. And maybe the Giants just don't see it with uh, with Dalvin Tomlinson. So getting another another player to possibly replace him, or just another rotational player. This is a great addition. I think R.J. McIntosh is a great depth defensive lineman at the next level. I had him as my 124th player. I gave this a B plus. So recapping the Giants' grades, you've got an A+, plus, an A, another A, an A-, minus, a B, and a B+. Plus. Uh, when you factor in, you know, the weights that you got to nail it early, but they also nailed it late. I gave this an A. Listen, there was nothing, nothing wrong with this Giants' uh, draft class whatsoever. I think David Gettleman really came in, set the tone, and he's kind of building what Carolina had at, you know, with the Giants. I love it. Um, next up was the Washington Redskins. Now, Washington, God, I hate, you know, Matt Miller from Bleach Report and I share the same consensus. I hate this, this, uh, this, uh, front office. Um, they fired Scott McLuhan last year and then they used his board. They didn't make any changes to his board after, you know, since before the combine and they followed his board, which injuries and things like that happened. And I don't know who set the board this year, but this just doesn't make any fucking sense. It came out as an okay draft, but they could have done a lot better. And a lot of it is based off the fact that they kind of nailed the latter stages of, of the draft uh, than the early portions. So at pick 13, they get Deron Payne. Now I feel like they made this pick last year because they did make this pick last year. They last year at like pick 17, got Jonathan Allen. Jonathan Allen was a much more proven player than Deron Payne. Uh, Allen had several years of production. Deron Payne was a one-year guy who had a questionable motor. I had him as a as a 20th overall player on my board, which is an early second-round grade. To get him at 13, um, I don't know. I think it was a little bit of a reach. There were other needs available, and there were other, there were much better players available. Derwin James was still available, and Derwin to Washington just made so much sense that it was almost impossible to foresee, to foresee it not happening if Derwin was still there. And... Washington just decides we're going to turn into Alabama. I didn't know that uh, Ozzie Newsom joined Washington's uh, front office, but this didn't make any fucking sense. I gave it a B minus. Uh, the the as far like there wasn't much of a reach, but it was just a questionable si- decision as to why you need another defensive tackle from Alabama, one that's not as proven, one that's very inconsistent, needs a lot of development, when you've already gotten a guy from Alabama that's a much better player the year before, and there were other, you know, there were better players at positions you needed more. I gave it a B-. minus. They made up for it a little bit at uh, in round two, uh, Darius Geis. Darius Geis, I would have been fine with him being taken at uh, at 13, 
because Darius Geis to, to Washington at 13 was connected for quite a while uh, before the off-field and the immaturity stuff and bullshit came up with Darius Geis. Um, listen, I, if it weren't for the, you know, off-field and, you know, so, all right, let me delve into what some of this off-field stuff was. Um, it came out that the questions he was asked at the combine that he was talking about weren't actually asked about. Like, the, no one asked him that. He made it up. So I understand why he fell, because I think teams are going to be like, well, if you're willing to lie about that, what? how can we really trust you? No one wants to employ a liar. And I think that's why he fell a bit. Um, there's, it's not like a DUI or a domestic violence or sexual assault or anything, but it's just, again, immaturity. Immaturity, you know, is a big red flag when you're handing someone several million dollars. Um... And you know what? That did cause him to slide, and I hope he does prove him wrong. I like Darius Geis as a prospect. I really don't like the fact that he went to Washington, because as an Eagles fan, I don't want another star running back running over the Eagles. Uh, but I gave it an A-, minus, and that's just because I hope that it's the right uh, situation where they can maybe get him to you know, smarten up a little bit. Um, if, it weren't, if he had just fallen for no apparent reason, this would have been an easy A+. Plus. Uh, but I don't know. I also just don't trust that coaching staff, that environment in Washington. That all just kind of seems like a mess. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Like I said, um, Jerron Christian at 74. Um, I thought Jerron Christian was shit during the year. And then about a month before the draft, maybe even less, I went back and I, I rewatched some of his tape. And he played an interesting position at Louisville because he didn't just play left tackle. It was dependent on what uh, what side of the field they were on. He would switch. So they did strong side, weak side. Uh, so he's very versatile. Uh, but so he moved up my board, and he actually does have a higher potential than I thought he did. Um, that being said, why the fuck did Washington take him? Why did Washington take him in round three? They've got Trent Williams, one of the best offensive tackles in the game. Yeah, left tackle. They've got Morgan Moses, one of the best right tackles in the game, and then they've got Ty Insecki, who's one of the best sw- you know, uh, swing tackles. In you know in, in the NFL, sorry, I said in the NBA. Sorry, left tackle in the in the NFL, the best right tackle in the NFL, and the best swing tackle in the NFL. Why the fuck do you need another offensive tackle? I don't know if this is a money thing or what, but it just didn't seem to fit a need. Great value because he's the 80th ranked player on my board, and you got him at 74. But where is the need? Where is the need? This is not a team that has the luxury of skipping needs to you know get the best player available. They still needed a safety. And there were still good safeties available. Eric Reed was still available at this point, and they didn't take him. This just, or not Eric Reed, uh, Justin Reed. Justin Reed from Stanford was still available, and they did not take him. Again, what the hell is going on with the Washington Redskins? It doesn't make sense. Their front office is just not smart. Speaking of not smart, day four, Troy Ap- Ap- Apke. I think I'm pronouncing that right, from Penn State, they get a safety. However, Troy Apke is purely a speed guy. I didn't watch a lot of his tape. In fact, I didn't even, he wasn't on my watch list at all, so he didn't make my board. But from hearing how the media is tearing this this pick apart, it's pretty clear. Troy Apke is purely a speed guy. He lacks instincts and coverage. He's not great against the run. He's a white guy that ran fast and surprised Deion Sanders. How is that worth a fourth-round pick? This guy is not going to start. He, You know what? Monte Nicholson, as you know, who was a sixth-round pick last year, was a much better player than Troy Apke appears to be. Now, again, for those of you who don't know, didn't watch the last video you know, earlier today, didn't watch last year's uh, rankings, if I don't have a player on my board, I generally just give it a C, just because I can't make a true judgment call. So I can't make a true judgment call with Troy Ap- Apke, but from what I've heard, it's a bad pick, but I can't make that call. I gave it a C. Next up, Tim Settle out of Virginia Tech, another defensive tackle. This, again, what the fuck is going on with Washington and investing in the D-line when the D-line is not an issue for them? Linebacker is an issue for them. The secondary is an issue for them. Not the defensive line. Getting an offensive tackle. Like, what the fuck are they doing? 
Not to mention, Tim Settle is just not a good football player. He's slow, he's unathletic, he's not strong, he doesn't have a high motor. What about him screams a good football player? They got him at 163, he was 189 on my board. I gave it a B- minus just because of the value, but Tim Settle is a pure nose tackle. He's 6'2", 6'3", 335, unathletic. He kind of reminds me of the Casey Hampton type player, which is going out of style in the NFL. And they get him... And they've also got a 4-3, which a true nose tackle doesn't fit in. So, again, what is going on with this Redskins front office? This makes no sense. Then they go back to being the Washington Crimson Tide again, or Maroon Tide. They go and get Sean Dion Hamilton out of Alabama. Again, another player I actually really like, much like Gase, much like Deron Payne. Uh, They finally addressed their need at linebacker, which was good. Uh, They got him at 197. He was my 109th ranked player. I gave this an A. Uh, Sean Deion Hamilton is coming off of an injury, uh, so you hope he's able to to recover in time. But you know what? They finally made a good pick. Other than Darius Geis, it just took them until, you know, like round six. Then 241, uh, towards the end of the draft, they get Greg Stroman out of uh, Virginia Tech. Finally addressed the corner need, just five rounds too late. Um... 241 on my, uh, was the pick. He was 241 on my board, um, which meant he was a UDFA on my board. But still, you know what? When it's round seven, I, don't, I tend not to give a shit about that. Uh, I gave it an A. It at least addressed a need at that point. Yeah, and he's probably going to become a good special teams player as well. Then with Mr. Irrelevant, they get Trey Quinn, the other wide receiver out of SMU. 256 was the pick. 265 on my board. Gave it an A-. minus. Listen, it gives them another option in case some of those wide receivers they've had in the past don't pan out. Um, overall, I didn't really like this class. I thought they did better at, at, you know, at the tail end of it than they did at any other point. Uh, the Deron Payne pick made very little sense. Deron Christian pick made very little sense. Troy Apke really didn't make a lot of sense. I gave it a B overall. I just wasn't really a big fan of this, of this draft. Now let's talk about the uh, hometown Dallas Cowboys. Now before we get into the Cowboys, I thought it was kind of funny if I can just say last year we talked a lot, uh, or at least I talked a lot about how I was very, very kind of a little bit pissed off, but at the same time got a big kick out of uh, Drew Pearson poking fun at the um, Philadelphia crowd. Uh, about the, you know, the not winning a Super Bowl and how the Eagles helped, you know, make Drew Pearson's career, yada, yada, yada. And then this year, everyone got the Cowboys back. Um, you know, Chris, you know, um, Justin Tuck, you know, saying the Giants, the, the greatest football, you know, the greatest organization in, in pro sports. Uh, Michael Vick, you know, um, you know, saying, you know, oh, and for the record, I never lost to Dallas, um. You know, the six-time, you know, uh, world champion San Francisco 49ers, anytime that came up, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Green Bay Packers, everyone just laying into the Cowboys. My personal favorite was Chris Canty with the, it is an honor to be, you know, here, you know, for the, you know um, in the city of the team that drafted me, representing my hometown team and the team I won a Super Bowl ring with, with the Giants. That killed me because that's a former Cowboy poking fun at the Cowboys. Um, I mean, it's all in good fun. The crowd ate it up. I ate it up. I fucking loved it. Now let's talk football. Let's get into the, um, you know, it, you know into the Cowboys pick. Started off. 19th overall, they get Leighton, Va- Leighton Van Der Esch out of Boise State, an off-season riser. I love Leighton Van Der Esch on paper. The only reason I didn't give this an A+, plus, he was my 18th ranked player, they got him at 19. The only reason I didn't give this an A+, plus was because there is a little bit of concern about his neck injury. Uh, it's got a uh, narrowing of the spinal cord on his neck, which is scary, but I mean... The dude is just an absolute animal, um, and especially with Sean Lee there to kind of mentor him and teach him, I think that he's the perfect player to take over for Sean Lee. Uh, he's just as athletic as some of these, you know, like these like money backers that are like six two and like two twenty five, two thirty. Except he's six three and two fifty five. He's just he's a sweet player. Uh, real, you know, it sucks that he went to Dallas, where I'm gonna have to boo him. Um, speaking of sucks that he went to Dallas, uh, Connor Williams. Uh, how did he fall this far? Um, I hate the fact I have to give the Cowboys an A+, but I have to on this one. Connor Williams, um, 
he was my number one overall tackle. He was a top ten player on my board. Um, I was surprised that you know San Francisco passed him up. I was surprised that Oakland passed him up. I was shocked that Cleveland passed him up at the top of the second. Um, and then I was really upset when Philly traded in front of Dallas and then didn't get Connor Williams, who was the player that at the time I thought it was going to be because of the aging of, of Jason Peters. Regardless, Connor Williams is, you know, was the pick at 50. They announced him as a guard, which means he's going to probably – play left guard, which fills that Ronald Leary role that they lost a couple years ago. And you know what? It's a great story for Connor Williams. He overcame a lot. Um, I don't know why the fuck he fell. He had a great season this year. He missed some time with an injury, but he came back and he didn't miss a step. Um, didn't allow a, a, a sack in his sophomore year. And in fact, I don't even know if he allowed a pressure in his sophomore year. Like, the dude's a freak. Um, yeah, he had kind of like... He had one bad game against Maryland in three years as you know as a starter at Texas, and I guess that was enough to drop him from like top ten to top you know to the fiftieth pick. Um, listen, I I can't I can't rave about this pick enough. The Cowboys nailed this pick. This is an A plus. <sighs> he was my seventh overall player. They got him at fifty. It sucks. That it had to be Dallas though. So. Um, at eighty one, Michael Gallup, the receiver out of um, out of Colorado State. Um, listen, Terrence Williams is still somehow an NFL player. I think that this is starting to move him away from being an NFL player. I like him a lot more than I like Terrence Williams, especially in this offense. Um, 81 was the pick, 79 on my board. This is an A. Um, Dorrance Armstrong from Kansas at 116, another A-plus for Dallas, unfortunately. Or fortunately, if you're a Cowboys fan. Dorrance Armstrong, 43rd on my board. They got him at 116. Had a down year last year because being the only good player in Kansas football history um, happened to uh, draw a lot more attention to him this year than would have last year. Drew a lot more double and triple teams, which meant that, that his production dropped big time. He was also playing as a 3-4 defensive end at 240 pounds. So he's playing out of position because Kansas can't get any fucking talent. Get him in the right system, which... Rod Marinelli's system is, in fact, the right system, and he's going to thrive. Uh, not to mention that this, they get about 70 picks worth of value there. There's an A+. Plus. Um, Jason Witten retires after day one of the draft, and, um, yeah, I guess kind of pisses off a lot of Cowboys fans. Bit of a dick move, but I think they might have found his heir apparent in Dalton Schultz, the tight end out of Stanford at 137. I had him at 119 on my board. This is another A. And you know what? As an Eagles fan, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this, and I'm just so upset because I can't seem to find anything wrong with this fucking Cowboys draft. Um, and you know what? They they won at it again. 171, they get Mike White out of Western Kentucky to back up Dak Prescott. Listen, they're able to find these really good gems late in the draft. Dak was a good one. Cooper Rush was at least a good backup quarterback for him last year. Now they can at least uh, you know invest a pick in a backup quarterback. Mike White had starter potential a couple years down the line, and they're going to have him sit behind Dak, who's a great up and who's a great young quarterback. This is not. Uh, he was 127 on my board. This is an A minus. Fuck. Uh, they finally slip up. They get someone who's not on my board. They get Chris Covington, uh, the linebacker of Indiana. Uh, 193 was the pick. Not on my board. Had to give it a C. Uh, but, fuck, back at it again. 208, Cedric Wilson, the wide receiver out of Boise State. Better player than Terrence you know, Williams is now, ever will be. Uh, he was 154 on my board. This is another A. They... Just, I mean, Will McRae, who's actually the one making the picks, not Jerry Jones, not Stephen Jones. Will McRae does have the ultimate, you know, you know, is the one, you know, recommending these picks, and then Jerry Jones just signs off on them. Uh, he fucking nailed this draft. And then Bo Scarborough at 236. He was 172 on my board. I don't like Bo Scarborough. I don't think he's good at football. I think he's the most overhyped guy. First guy off the bus, sure, but, you know, you're going to play him? Probably not. I gave this pick a B. Overall, Dallas gets an A-, minus, A+. Plus. A, A plus, A, A minus, C, A, B. I gave them an A overall. I could find very little wrong with this class. Now for my Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I hated this draft. Um, but I think a lot of it is Philadelphia just, I mean, they're more so looking for next year. Uh, they didn't have a lot of picks. They took a lot of chances. Um, and this really wasn't all that great of a draft class from top to bottom overall for anyone. Yo, yo, yo. From, like, as far as the talent pool, Dallas made the most of it. Philly didn't. Let's get into it. So they trade up, 
pick 49, one pick in front of Dallas, and they send out David Akers. And David Akers, tiny little lake, five foot seven David Akers, the least intimidating human being on the planet, goes to fucking town on that crowd. Yo, yo, NFC East champions, yo, divisional champions, David, those are the same thing. NFC champion, Super Bowl world champion. The last time you know, uh, your Cowboys were even in the Super Bowl, these prospects hadn't been born yet. And I, like, fucking fell over laughing. I thought that that was hilarious. And then they announced a kid who was a Cowboys fan, was named after the Cowboys, Dallas Goddard, uh, the tight end out of uh, San Diego, sorry, not San Diego State, South Dakota State. My bad. Out of South Dakota State, the Jackrabbit. I thought this kid might have gotten in round one. He was number 36 on my board. He was my number one tight end. Uh, I compared him to Zach Ertz, and when you lose Trey Burton and Brent Selleck's gone, you needed to replace him somehow. Um, having da- Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz, who are more or less the same player, although I think Goddard's a little bit stronger of a blocker uh, in the same offense, this is fucking terrifying for the NFC. Good luck trying to uh, defend that. Uh, I loved it. I gave it an A. Just the other reason I didn't give it an A plus because it wasn't a crucial need uh, at that point in the draft. And Connor Williams is still on the board, and I thought that uh, maybe guard could have used an upgrade or offensive tackle uh, for the future with um, you know Vitae being you know kind of a swing tackle and Jason Peters being old and Connor Williams still being there. I really wanted it to be Connor Williams. I think at the time I kind of took that out on the Eagles. Uh, Good God, they came back at 125, though, and they blew this pick. They got Avante Maddox uh, out of Pitt. This was my second lowest graded corner in the entire class. Um, This was a bad pick. He was number 262 on my board, so not only was he, um, you know, not anywhere near, like, this was a third, this was a fourth round pick. This wasn't, like, a fourth round grade. This was a, like, camp body grade. UDF, you know, UDFA started at 212, 213 for me. He was great at 262. The only reason I didn't give this an F is because uh, he's more so a depth guy than I, I don't think he'll actually see much of the field. Probably a special teams guy at best. Uh, I gave this a D plus. I hated this pick. But they made up for it five picks later by getting Josh Sweat, uh, the defensive end out of Florida State. Uh, who fell due to injury. Listen, this guy uh, has Jay Ajayi knee. Uh, it's bone on bone. Uh, not going to be a multi-contract guy. And you know what? Doesn't need to start right away. He's going to be behind Chris Long and uh, Michael Bennett, uh, Derek Barnett, so many other fucking defensive ends. Uh, this guy is going to probably you know, play maybe 20, 25% of the snaps. He might still get five, six sacks. I love this pick. I gave it an A+. Plus. Um, and then they, I'm just going to lump these two guys together. Matt Pryor, the guard out of TCU, like 6'6", 350, just a mammoth dude going back to the well where we got Vitae from. And then Jordan Mailata, a big dude out of Australia, a former rugby player, obviously didn't scout either of these guys. Um, had to give them both a C because, again, don't know who they are, don't know if they're any good, hadn't really heard of anyone that did know who these guys were. Um, overall, so A, D+, plus, A+, plus, C, C. Um, I gave it a B minus just because I think Goddard and Sweat were by far the best picks, but Avante Maddox just just fucked this draft entirely. Uh, so that's going to do it for today, guys. T- tune back tomorrow for AFC North and NFC North. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell another friend, and I'll see you again tomorrow.